Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on creating objects in perspective and text in perspective in Illustrator. Before we begin, let me introduce you to my Illustrator courses at Skillshare. When you sign up for Skillshare, you'll get access to thousands of classes, including over 200 of mine. In the description below is a Skillshare coupon for you and this will give you a deal at least as good as the current Skillshare offer and often mine's better. I also have Illustrator courses at Udemy. You'll find a referral link for those courses also in the description below. And please feel free to share these resources with family and friends. Let's switch back to Illustrator and have a look at the Perspective Grid tool. You'll get to it by clicking here on the Perspective Grid. Now you've probably done that by accident at some stage and wondered what you've done and perhaps even had to close the file because you didn't want it. Well, if you need to get rid of this at any time, choose View and go to Perspective Grid and Hide Grid and it's just removed. I'm going to put mine back though because I do want it. So let's choose View, Perspective, Grid and we'll just show the grid. Now when you're working with the grid there are planes and there's a plane here, there's a plane on this side and there's a base plane. And this little widget here shows you your planes and this is where you select them as well. So we've selected the orange plane and now the base plane which is green. You can change the colors using the perspective grid option. So you'll go to view perspective grid and then define grid. And here you can set custom colors and also the opacity of your grid as well as selecting between the available one, two or three point perspective, changing the scale and even the spacing for your grid lines. You can also change viewing angle and stuff like that. I'm not going to do any of that, but that's where you would do it should you wish to do so. Let's have a look at these little selectors around the grid. This one here just adjusts the top so you can make it bigger or smaller by dragging on it. You might think that this one here would adjust the bottom. It doesn't. It's this one here. So we'll just drag on that to make it deeper. Now these ones here, the circles on the side, allow you to make your grid wider. And these here adjust the horizon line. Now you can also move these planes by swinging them out. So here is the selector to swing this plane out. So if you were doing a two dimensional drawing and you need to have things appearing on different planes, then you can swing out the plane to wherever you need it to be as you're doing your drawing. And this plane here will swing out too. And there it is there. And of course the base plane will swing as well. So now we've got a sort of overall view of the grid. Let's go and actually use it to do something. So I'm just going to close that file and I've pre-prepared a file with parts of a quote from Terry Pratchett. Now each of these is a separate text object and we're going to use those in our grid. So we're going to start by putting down our perspective grid and then we'll just adjust it to size so there's plenty of room for us to work in. I'm just going to square up these two side planes so that they're going to be aligned. So I'm pretty happy with that as a starting point. So I'm going to start by drawing some rectangles that will go behind the text here. So I'll go to the rectangle tool, make sure that I have the plane selected I'm going to work on and start drawing out my rectangles. So here's the first one, but let me go and get some colors to use. So I'm just going to color themes and I'm going to choose a sort of monochromatic color theme here to use. So I've just added that to my swatches. I'll select a color. I'm going to make a lighter version of this for the backgrounds. Now I want to put a second rectangle over here. Now I could draw it out or I could copy this one. Let's see how we would copy the existing one. So we'll go to the perspective selection tool, click on that. So you need to use the perspective selection tool to select objects in the perspective grid. Now that's really important because when you move them using the selection tool, they adjust according to the grid. If you were to move them using the regular selection tool, then they just move and the grid is not being adhered to. So you need to be really careful about using the correct tool. This one's fairly easy to remember because it's just shift V. Whereas this selection tool is letter V, this one is shift and V. Now I'm just going to redraw that in case I lost its perspective in the process. 
I'll go back to my perspective selection tool and I need to drag a duplicate of this away so I'll alt or option drag. I want to place it on this plane over here so as I'm dragging it I'm going to type the number of the plane which is 3 and you can see that it's swinging across to that plane. As soon as I let go to number 3 I can now just place it into position on this plane and I'm going to color it a slightly different color. Let's go and create another one here. I'm going to make sure I target the right plane. Drag to create it. Fill it with a color. I'm going to make this a, again a lighter version of this color. I'm going to drag it across to this side. So I'll go back to my perspective selection tool. I'll alt or option drag a duplicate away. Then I'll start moving it. Type the number 3 because that's the plane I want to put it on and just move it into position. I'm going to change its color as well. Now I'm just going to roughly position these. You can be a little bit more specific than I'm being but I do want to align these left edges so I'm going to click on one shift click on the other and I can use the horizontal align left to grab that and align it. I'm doing the same with these so that they're evenly arranged here. Now we're going to put some pieces on the base plane so again I'll go back to drawing a rectangle. I'll click on the base plane because that's where I want to put it and I'll just drag it out. Switch to the perspective selection tool which is the shift and the letter V and just move it into perspective and I can enlarge it too. I'm just going to realign everything just a little bit because I want these base pieces to be a bit larger so that means moving these others down a little bit. Now to get the other base piece I'm going to make a duplicate of this alt or option drag it away. I'm just going to change the color on it and I'm going to move it into position but here I can't actually get it to be the right size without rescaling it. So we're going to be aware of that when we work with the text in a minute then that we won't be able to have text going along this sort of direction without arranging the text a little bit differently before we start. So I've got my sort of panels in place and now I'm going to add my text. Now you can't do as I've just done in draw in the rectangles. You can't do that with text. So you have to pre-prepare your text as just regular text and then add it. So I'm going to select the first text object and I'm going to recolor it at this point. I'm going to select the perspective selection tool and drag and drop my text into the plane I want it in. Well I want it in this plane so I'm going to make sure I target the correct plane before I start and I'll just move the text into position. I'm holding the shift key to scale it. Now all of my text was created before these rectangles so it's all behind everything. So I'm going to choose object arrange and then bring to front. Now while I'm here I'm going to grab all of these text objects with the regular selection tool and bring them all to the front too otherwise I'll have to do that individually later on. So now let's go and grab the next piece of text. So we're doing that with the regular selection tool. If you want to recolor it, do it now. So that's what I'm doing. Let's just make it a darker version of the color. Now we'll go to the perspective selection tool and drag it into position, but I haven't selected the right plane. So I'm just going to type the number three to target this plane and then drop it into position. Hold the shift key as I scale it because I do want it to be scaled in proportion. Now I'm going to continue and do the next two pieces of text and speed up the video as I do. Now the first piece of text I'm going to put on this base plane will go in easily enough. Shift V to select the perspective selection tool drag it into position, type the number 2 for the plane that it's going to be on and drop it into position. Shift drag to make it larger in proportion. Now the last one is going to be a little more difficult. Let me just show you what the problem is. Let's just fill it with some color. Let's make it darker. 
I'm going to move it into position, Shift V to select the perspective selection tool. And this is what happens when I try and put it in here. It's going in the wrong direction. So I'm going to undo that. I'm going back to the selection tool and I'm going to rotate this. I'm going to rotate it so that's pointing up. If you hold the shift key as you do that, you can rotate it perfectly 90 degrees. Now let's go to the perspective selection tool and drag and drop it. And this time it's going in in the correct rotation. Hold the shift key as we enlarge it. Now what I like to do at this point is to press Shift Control I, that would be Shift Command I on the Mac, so that you can get a look at how things are looking. At this point you can still use the Perspective Selection tool because you're still working in perspective, it's just that you can't see it. So I'm going to just adjust these so that they're lined up a little more neatly. And so I'm cutting off the bits that I don't actually need. So let's just drag this in as well and let's just size these to suit. And I'll drag this one in too. So the perspective selection tool is still working and we can still select and move things even though we haven't got the grid visible. It's still being adhered to as we're moving things around. I'm just going to display it again so that you can see how everything is working. If you want to move things around, then you're going to select them with the perspective selection tool and then move them. Now, if you need to change the color of your text, you can't do that with the perspective selection tool. So let me just select this piece of text here. I've got it selected. I'm going to try and change its color to pink. And you can see that it's not successful at all. If you do need to change the color of the text, it's best to select on the text and go up here to edit text. Now it appears as a sort of overlay. And so you can choose the color that you want to change it to. It's now changed and you can exit out of this by just clicking here and you'll see the changes that are reflected in the text. So while you can change the color of objects in this perspective grid view, if you're going to change the color of text, you have to use the edit text option to do so. I hope that this video has been of help to you in terms of creating objects and text in perspective in Illustrator. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and that notification bell so you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.